Uncle Rennie was ill the day the earth stood still, but he told us where we stand. And Flash Gordon was there in silver underwear. Claude Rains was the invisible man. Then something went wrong for Fay Ray and King Kong. They got caught in a celluloid jam. Then at a deadly pace, it came from outer space. And this is how the message ran. Hi there, Dax here for another pre Reagan science fiction. For the past couple of weeks, I looked at Frankenstein and his monster, and werewolves. So today I thought I'd look at the third monster from Abbott and Costello meets Frankenstein, namely, vampires. While in that movie, it's Dracula being played by the immortal Bela Lugosi, vampire myths of different types are found the world over. Ah, and some of them are vastly different than others. Not all of them are undead, and not all of them even drink the blood of the living. The one common thread is that they gain sustenance from taking the life force in one way or another from others. You know, like lawyers. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. Well, I have kind of touched on vampires already with the vampire-like zombies from I Am Legend, and in particular, The Last Man on Earth. We're coming to kill you, Morgan. But while they do have the problems with sunlight and garlic, they do not subsist on the lives of others because everyone is already dead. But today's movie, I think, will have a far more traditional vampire, while still being science fiction. Adam Age Vampire. Let's get right in, as we see that this movie is brought to you by Topaz. And that, unlike the last movie, this one has opening credits. You may also notice the predominance of Italian names in these credits. That's right, this is another translated old movie, this time from Italy. You may also notice that this is my first movie in black and white. What the hell, let's get in the spirit. Meet Jeanette and Pierre. He is a sailor and she is, I think a stripper, based on this poster of her outside. Either way, it's something that Pierre does not approve of. Either me, or the so-called profession you're working at. You're still working? So that means I'm through. Oh, please don't treat me like this! So he leaves her and she, in sadness, takes off in her car. Unfortunately, she runs into Toonces. Have to be it. You just look at <laughs> Jeanette was sent to a clinic who saved her, but she got disfigured by the crash. Bad luck. And here we meet the movie's scientist's beautiful assistant, Monique. Yes, this time she gets a name. She tries to recruit Jeanette for the doctor's experiments. No. You mustn't give up all hope yet. The clinic let her bring in a gun? We have discovered a new therapy together, and it's miraculous. I guarantee it. Slight tangent. They never state where this movie takes place, but everyone has French names. But still, for some reason, the name of this young reporter still feels out of place. That is... Hello, Leroy. Hi. Anyway, back to the film and process. Meet the doctor for our movie, Albert. Just as good often grows out of evil, Derma 28 has grown out of Derma 25, the serum which provoked an accelerated abnormal development of cells. When I finally succeeded in stabilizing its effects, I produced the anti-cancer vaccine, which for years had been the major goal of the most important scientific research. So they developed a serum that would give you cancer, and then happened to develop a cure for cancer from that. 
why did they make the first one? That's science. And science is one cold-hearted bitch with a 14-inch strap on. Oh, and that guy who just blatantly looked at the camera? That's Albert's disfigured assistant, Sasha. Though his disfigurement is just being mute. I told you, scientists love their disfigured henchmen. You know, I don't mean to embarrass you, but I'm a rather brilliant surgeon. Perhaps I could help you with that hump. What hump? So, at the end of this exposition monologue, Monique injects herself with a cancer potion. Transforming them into monsters. You're aware of its effect. Look at that. Oh, give me an injection of Derma 28. But you know it's never been tried on human beings. I wouldn't have the courage. That's just why I did it, to force you to have the courage. So they try out the Derma 28 on her, and it's a success. I shall always remember everything you've done for me. Thank you. Tell me that in some other way. Tell it to Monique, not your assistant. Oh, and of course she's in love with Albert. Why wouldn't she be? Remember, Henry, the very deepest love can easily change to the very deepest hatred. So, the test worked on Monique, so they can just release their findings and they don't need to do the experiment on Jeanette. Oh, well, never mind, as Jeanette shows up for a secret experiment. There's no doubt of it. Yes. She's disfigured forever. As if by a cancer that's beyond control, like leprosy. Dude, what a Johnny! Also, I'm almost positive leprosy isn't a cancer. Well, unsurprisingly, she's still suicidal. But Albert gets her gun. If you really are so desperate, take your own life if you want to. Yes, I'll give this back to you. But only on that day when you look me in the face and tell me that I failed you. And she passes out. Albert and Monique take advantage of this to perform their experiment. Meanwhile, Pierre goes to the clinic looking for Jeanette. There can only be one explanation. As a nurse, I'll have to betray a secret. Jeanette Moreno didn't want you to see her again as she is. Anyway, it seems that a drunk Sasha forgot to charge the generator. So Albert had to go and charge it while Monique prepared things in the lab. But then he discovers a sledgehammer and a crack in his wall. Whose was that? Sasha's? And so, Albert takes time off of his experiment he's been waiting years for to knock a hole in his basement wall. And he ends up finding a secret passage he didn't know he had. Anyway, back to the experiment! Nothing. It has no effect. What can we do? Derma injection. There wasn't an instantaneous fixing of her scars, so Albert panics. Not a drop of the serum left. Five injections without any effect at all. But wait! Albert! Look there! Okay, this is good transformation makeup. Too bad this isn't the werewolf one. Don't believe his lies. And Albert officially becomes really creepy. The next morning, they show her that she is cured, and she kisses Albert in gratitude. And, of course, now he loves her. But you love me. You must know you love me. I have snatched you away from desperation and from death. It is I who restored your beauty. It is I who need you. I'll never be able to live without you. Yeah, really, really creepy. But during this whining and dining, he discovers that her scars are coming back. Albert drugs her. If only she had Dracula's restraint. I never drink. Why? She means more to you now than just an experiment. Monique, I cannot do it without you. Then I'll make a condition. You know what it is. Yes, never see her again. I give you my word, believe me. Why did he know that that was her condition? Does this happen a lot to them? So they take her back to the lab and realize that they are out of the Derma 28 they need to help her, and can't make any more quickly enough. I'll transplant directly from another human being those glands which produce Derma 28, from another woman, a young one! Apparently, young women in particular, possess a gland that produces a chemical which can cure cancer. Who knew? 
But Monique doesn't want anything to do with murdering people just to fix Jeanette's skin. You will have to help me in this also. Help me overcome this infatuation. Struggle along with me as you always have done before. And the utter Johnny that is Albert seduces Monique to aid him. The next morning the police arrive due to Albert calling them. And since Albert is famous for his work, the chief himself comes along. There's this running either gag or subplot, I don't know, about the chief having recently given up smoking. But why did Albert call the police at all? Where is Monique? He didn't. What's happened to Monique? <laughs> he didn't! Paralysis of the heart, it's quite obvious. He did! He killed his longtime friend and partner for her magic cure gland instead of some random on the street. Wow. Just wow. Also, how do you disguise surgically removing an organ for a heart attack? The pathologist takes Albert's expert word on the matter and foregoes a normal autopsy. Inspector, if the decision lies within my jurisdiction, I say no autopsy. Oh no, if one isn't necessary. Absolutely not. Later, a couple discovers a completely unrelated body in the woods. She's dead! Stop! Stop! Let's go to the police! A couple with dub actors that Tope has pulled from the janitorial staff. The next day, Albert and Jeanette go for a drive so he can pretend that she isn't a prisoner when they hear the news report. There is no doubt that the girl... Albert! Huh? ...was a victim of the gorilla, which... Apparently this movie takes place in the same universe as Murders on the Room Morgue. But the Dermot 28 starts to wear off again. Another and another until I save her once and for all. But I don't have the courage. I don't want to kill again. So he takes the Dermot 25 to turn himself into a monster. Wait. He uses a chemical of his own design to turn into an evil version of himself. God damn it! This isn't a vampire movie, this is another Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde movie! Hello there, Mr. Doctor. Dr. Jekyll. And, again, this one has better transformations. Though, not sure why he becomes clay in there. And I told you, we're not clay. We're silicone dolls with foam bodies over ball and socket armatures. And it turns him into a Morlock. Young lady. Huh? Hey, it's late. Come here, I'll give you anything you ask. All right. You really gave me a turn. What are we playing? Hide and 